So now I want to work on uh, developing the base wood planks, basically to support the whole uh, cabinet counter prop that we're making here. So if I uh, were to look at my reference here, um, it's this piece down here. And usually it's like, you know, a really thin plank and then a really long plank this way. So and they just kind of screw them together, nail them together at the ends there. All right, so uh, what I want to do now is uh, get that going. So let's go back to here. Uh, I'm going to drop down an object merge node, and I'm going to go and drag and drop this out base into the uh, object one for this first merge option here. And that will allow me then to uh, break off a new stream over here so I can work on that guy. So a really cool way to do this is to actually convert this over into uh, a nerves surface. All right, so from Polygon, we want to go to a nerve surface. And the reason why I want to do this is because um, it's parameterized. And so basically it comes with um, UV values that we can use uh, carve node on. And so I'm going to say interpolate through holes. That way we have the same quad, but now it's a nerve surface. And so I can use a carve node now, like I was saying previously, uh, to carve off sections, right? Um, this will allow me to define the geometry that we use for the those side planks that I want to build up. But I want to do it on both sides, right? And so we need to do an equal offset. So I'm just going to highlight this, right, left click and drag, and then do a relative reference. Then we'll do a 1 minus. That way we get the same offset on the other side. So now as I move this guy, it's equal offset on both sides. Sweet. All right, so with that, um, now what we can do is develop um, the, the width planks over here. So um, now that we've got uh, these three primitives here, I'm just going to blast away uh, primitive one, or I'm going to split, actually. So let's use a split node. And I'm going to split on one. And that's procedural because it's always going to be the, the one right in the middle, right? We're not going to really be changing up this kind of box shape of the cabinet counter. So, and then I'm going to actually invert it. So let's uh, put the null over here. So now we have our depth planks and now we want, so we can name this here. So we can say depth planks. And over here, uh, we've got that other piece of geometry that we need to carve up now. So let's drop down a carve over here now. And I don't want to do that guy. This is on primitives. There we go. Now we're back in business. I just had it the wrong way. Okay, cool. So yeah, now we have this carve node. And so I, I want to do this on the first V and second V. All right, so that'll be um, what you see right here. Yeah. All right, and we just need to set up that same equal offset. So one minus the first V. There we go. So now we've got these guys. So we can go and merge these together. Just select both those guys and then hold down Alt and left click and drag to create a merge node. Very nice. And then finally, we're going to want to convert that all back to polygons. And again, interpolate through holes so we get just those quads back. I don't need all that extra geometry. Sweet. And so now it's real easy. All we have to do is just do a poly extrude. Uh, to develop the height of those particular guys, or the entire base of this particular prop. Uh, you can also go and add the back to it. really depends on what you're going to do. Um, a lot of times this will just be sitting on the ground, so you'd never need these polygons in a game, but I'm going to put it in there just for now. Maybe I'll add a little switch for it, so you can turn it on or off as needed. Yeah, so the other thing I want to do is I want to make sure that you know, these two guys are the same widths. Now, you don't necessarily have to do this, but currently these, these are decoupled, right? So I can make these guys really wide. And it's really simple um, to do. All we need is a value to, to determine um, how thick we want to make these wood planks. And so I'm going to go over to my controls. Remember, we pinned this particular panel over here, so we have access to our controls. I'm going to open up the parameter interface, and I'm going to create... Actually, no, I don't need a new folder. I'm just going to create a separator in here, just to indicate these are separate controls for something. And I'm going to drag and drop a float slider in there, and this is going to be called our uh, base wood 
um, thickness. Let's do that. And so we'll say uh, wood thickness. And let's give it a range. Always a good idea to set these guys up. I don't think I'm ever going to need to go to point more than 0.5, uh, but we'll test it out. And uh, the default I'm going to say is going to be 0.1 for now. Uh, we should also set up our ranges on these guys. Looks like I turned it on, but the ranges themselves go all the way to zero. I don't want the user to ever go to zero. So a minimum width of at least, well, we can do like 0.5, so half a meter. I'm going to lock it so they can't go any farther than that. And then maybe the max is like 12 feet for now. Yeah. And then for our depth, same thing, uh, maybe 0.25 for the minimum. And the max, I don't think you'd ever want something more than four for this. So I'm just going to go with that for now. Be really easy to tweak these um, as you uh, develop your asset. All right, so we got that uh, width thickness. Uh, while we're here, let's also add in a new float slider for the base wood uh, height. So we'll call this wood height. Like so, and set up a range for it. So I'm going to start with 0 0.1 for the minimum and maximum 0.5 for these guys. So half a meter. That's pretty tall. <laughs> And we'll start with a default of uh, 0.1. All right, I'm going to hit accept. Cool, so now we've got our new sliders. So really, this is going to be um, how thick I want the wood to be. The issue is this particular value right here is actually a percentage. All right, so let's take a look at this. So it's a percentage of the total width, right? Because this first U value goes up from zero to one, right? It's not the actual width of this. Currently, this is set to two meters or six feet. So when we're at zero, we're at uh, zero meters. When we're at one, I mean, yeah, zero meters. And then when we're at one, we're at two meters over here, right? So this is a percentage. And so in order to make this procedural and to use this value, I want to say I want my thickness to be 0.1 meters, right? I'm going to copy this value. I'm going to paste it into that uh, first U and then divide it by the total width. When we get the total width uh, in X by doing a BB box, right? So we put in zero for the first input geometry. Then we say D X size. There we go. All right, so now I have control over, and that becomes a percentage now because I take the total width and divide it by the thickness that I want. And I get a percentage, right? You can see this number is not the same as this number. So this will allow me to determine the actual percentage. So uh, let's just copy this then and put this down for this one. So I'm going to call this the um, depth uh, carve. And this is going to be the width carve. It's not necessary to name these things, but good idea to just stay organized. All right. So yeah, let's make sure I copy this up here. I believe it's still on the clipboard. This time, I just want to take that width thickness and divide it by the D or the Z size, All right? So now, if we were to take a look at our planks, if I move this value, they're always staying the same size to each other in relation to each other. Cool. All right, just fun math stuff. Oh, and now we need to hook up the height. So let's uh, copy the wood height and paste it for the uh, distance over here. There we go. So now I have control over that. So you can see how nice it is to, you know, just have this null node here. So as you're developing your HDA, you're just constantly uh, building up your UI as well. And then when we go to actually turn this into an HDA, we can literally just, you know, drag and drop our, uh, our whole folder of all the parameters over to the HDA and uh, it goes over nice and cleanly. All right. So um, now we've got all these uh, particular planks here, right? The next thing I, I want to do is I want to UV these guys. Now, you could always go and do a, a UV uh, unwrap. All right, that's that's a quick and dirty way to get some UVs, but you're going to get a lot of shells, right? So a really cool way to do this. Uh, it's really simple. It just takes a little bit of setup over here to you know do a proper box unwrap because literally all we have here are a bunch of boxes, right? So what I'm going to do is create a subnet, and I'm going to call this uh, box UV mapping. Say box UV map. All right, we'll use this quite often throughout this entire prop. So uh, let's dive into this particular uh, subnet here and get things set up. 
So I'm just going to select these guys and do a, a shift L on these just to organize them. And then I like to put down a null node here right under this first input just so I know it's coming in, even though it, it does have the label. I'm just going to call this geo in. Sometimes I have points coming in, sometimes I have geo coming in, sometimes just curves. So that's why I, I do that. It's not necessary. It's just a thing I do. Um, and then let's do a for each connected piece. There we go. So this will allow me to loop through each one of those uh, pieces of geometry that are connected. All right, so if I just loop through this guy with single pass on. All right, so what we want to do is we want to unfold this appropriately. And you got to do a little bit of extra, you know, when you're working in uh, Houdini for, to make this procedural at least. So the way that I do this is I create a box, right? And a unit box, right? So this is a unit box because the sizes are one in X, Y, and Z, and uh, one in uh, for scale. And so I can actually define a set of UVs that we can just use, or a set of seams, uh, I should say, that we can use over and over again. And it, it wouldn't really matter what the shape is, right? Because we can transfer our seam group to the geometry and let uh, Houdini work it out from there. All right, and so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and um, I'm going to hit S on the keyboard and select my edges. You can also hit 3 on the keyboard. So 2 is for points, 3 is for edges, 4 is for primitives. All right, so hit 3 on the keyboard. And I'm going to use this to define out my seams. All right, so I want to unwrap this such that... Well, let's just get one unwrap going here. So I want to make sure that, you know, we unwrap this whole guy, but keep some of these other guys on the side. Yep. And then I think I want the main seam to be back here. I think that that'll work. Uh, we need one more over here. I like we can always change it. All right, and then while you're in the scene view here, um, hit tab and then start typing out group and your group selection will be, or your edge selection will be right there for you. And uh, I like to call this seams, all right? And what we'll do is I'm gonna do a match size now. All right, and I wanna match this particular box to our uh, bounding box of this particular object that's coming in here, right? And inside the match size node, I'm going to say scale to fit. And so we get, literally, and this works really well for boxes. Um, we literally get that same piece of geometry that we just created over here. But this time, uh, this particular piece of geometry has our seams on it, right? It's so hard to put a null node down here so we get rid of that uh, visualization. You can see now we have our seams uh, set up. And I think I want to change that a little bit. Yeah, so that one's not right. That'll just pop off completely. So let's uh, redo that. And what I'm going to do is actually scale the box out. Yeah, so I want to match that particular shape just to make it easier for me to see. Doesn't matter because remember, it gets the match size again. All right, so let's uh, clear our edge selection group out. And basically, I want this guy, that's a seam, that's a seam. We're going to put the main seam over here. And that's a seam, and that's a seam. And I can get rid of that guy, because it's going to unfold from there. Yep. That should be good, then hit Enter. All right, so let's just... Uh, I'll do a UV flatten here. Let's see what we get. Oh, I need to set up the scene group. There we go. All right, so I need to cut off some of those other guys in there. Let's go back. Oh, yeah, totally. So again, hit this little guy. I want that one. And that one, yeah, because then they'll peel off, basically. Hit Enter, and then hit 5 on the keyboard to go in the UV view. There you go. Cool. So now, um, you could just use that geometry straight up. Let me get rid of this null node. 
You could use the geometry from here, but we might not have a box coming in every single time. And I want to be able to reuse this particular subnet. So I'm going to use a uh, group transfer. So we do a group transfer. All right, so I want to transfer to my original geometry. I want to take this guy and transfer the seam group. So in my group transfer here, I don't need prims or points. I'm just going to transfer the seam group here. So now you can see I've transferred the seam group over appropriately. Pretty cool. All right, and then we just uh, UV uh, flatten it. There we go. So if I were to look at all of them, let's do a single pass or unchecked single pass. We're going to get a couple here that do um, have long pieces. So you could set it up such that, you know, you look at the, you can switch between different uh, box types. So we could do something like uh, switch here. and have a different uh, preset for your seams, right? And I think I'm actually going to do that. So basically, the ones that are working really well, so those ones, I want all of them to look like that, are the ones that are on X. So I need to switch to a different uh, preset when I'm on the, the depth planks. And so we can set up a little wrangle node for this. Say check dir. And we're going to do a detail for this. And we'll just say um, i at switch. Or actually, let's first get the size. So I'm going to do vector. Or we do a float. Nope, let's do a vector. So I'm going to call this size. And I'm going to do get uh, bb box size. We'll say zero, and that's all we need. So now it's storing the size. So what we can do uh, is I'm going to say if um, z is greater than x, right? So we're going to say if size z is greater than size dot x, then we'll switch. All right, so I'm going to initialize uh, switch to be equal to zero. And if we are greater than z, then we're going to set at uh, switch to equal one. There we go. Cool. And we can just wire that into the straight right there into there. All right. So now all we need to do is come over here and just write a detail expression. So we'll say detail. And we want to get the data from our checker. And the attribute that we're looking for is switch and zero. And if all that went well, we should be good. Oh, well, we need to reassign this one. So let's do this one here. So this one is actually going to be bigger in Z. So my groups need to be different, or my ed, se ed selections need to be different. All right, cool. So I want that peeled off, that peeled off. And then this guy, this guy, and that guy. And then we'll do the main scene right here. Hit enter to so commit that. Let's take a look now. Yeah, there we go. So now they're all proper. Cool. So we'll have to set up a, a little bit uh, different one, but that's the main idea for um, doing procedural box mapping, UV mapping. Good idea to also put the output down here. Cool. So this works really well for boxes. Just a technique when you're working with these kind of wood planks here. All right. So that pretty much uh, does it for this particular setup. So I'm going to drop down a poly bevel. Just give it a little bit of a bevel on these guys. I'm going to make sure I save the scene as well. And uh, we'll just do a little bit. I just wanted to catch a little bit of specular. Makes it feel better in game too. Yeah. Looks good. And then finally, let's put this into a group. I'm going to call this base wood. And then we'll put a null node down. We'll call this out base wood. Cool. And you get R on the keyboard to set the, the blue flag there. 
Awesome, so we are on our way. That is the base wood now. So some pretty cool little tricks in there, and it's all UV'd. All right, so let's move on to the next step and uh, start developing the cabinet area.